official Mr.com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief. Uh, this is our live broadcast for the public. Uh, should be about maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I'll try and wind this up by, say, 20 past the hour. Um, and today is Tuesday, which means that we have a CRI CTO on the call. Sjord! Uh, always uh, look forward to uh, Tuesdays. And the Panna Cook Report out of uh, Breda, center of the universe. So uh, if anything, uh, look forward to that. Um, and uh, Ryan's a little bit discombobulated here today. Not really going to talk too much trade, just simply because uh, I think I've been sort of setting all of you up that uh, we're hitting the road here. Uh, so today is officially the day when... Uh, uh, head on across the border and uh, go pick up uh, Chris at SeaTac uh, this evening. Actually, going to have a nice uh, dinner with uh, Francis uh, just outside of SeaTac uh, this evening before we go and uh, pick up Chris. So uh, should be a, a, quite an adventure ahead of us. <laughs> if anything, I was a little melancholy yesterday with the uh, crew. Uh, my apologies to anybody who was a little bit sort of shocked by some of my, uh, sometimes Brian gets a little bit uh, over the top, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, philosophical, nostalgic, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so uh, um, long and short of it here is I've um, uh, been running around kind of like a chicken without a head here past day or two trying to get my act together because uh, today is officially the day we leave. So I'm not going to be uh, coming from you from green screens and all that kind of fun stuff over the next few days. Uh, probably, uh, I guess, really till the, probably the end of February, uh, we'll be sort of reporting from laptops and those kind of things and might even lean on the TRI team to do a lot of these uh, daily briefs. May, might even put some of the free broadcasts on hold here. Uh, but uh, I'm sure TRI will take care of you in one way or the other. Um, and as I said, uh, you know, today's after party uh, with Sjord, uh, Tuesdays, I mean, that's the main event. Uh, I'm talking about uh, getting you all ready uh, for the coming crypto bull uh, and um, and uh, all the various different ways you can play the market. So do you find it interesting, uh, you know, breadth wise, you can see the S&P 500 has rolled over hard here. I don't think the indexes have quite rolled over just yet, but you know, you look at the broader market uh, participation, everything is pointing bearish here like right now. Ironically enough, the only thing that's still pointing up here appears to be the uh, the uh, uh, crypto universe, uh, the broader universe. Uh, even that's kind of looking a little sketchy right now. Wouldn't necessarily say that we're at like an overly extreme reading. So it's not really like we're going to crash here. If anything, it's probably more of this back and forth chop. And actually, when we look at the Bitcoin chart in a weird sort of way, you can kind of see that I think they've basically established a, a range for price. And we're probably just going to bang around, go up, test the high, get everybody all excited. Well, go back down, test the lows. Everybody's all depressed and Really, at the end of all this, we don't really even go anywhere. Uh, I did put out a note, in fact, on the uh, Twitter feed, my Twitter feed, just basically saying as we wait for the next market structure signal now, might be a good time to take a little vacay. And as I said, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Getting in the car and hitting the road. Um, so I um, should be back, you know, doing sort of the formal thing, day trading with Top Step, all that kind of fun stuff by the end of the month. But over the next... Uh, say three weeks or so. Brian's going to be checking in from some really weird places around the world. So uh, <laughs> tune in for that. And as I said here, if you happen to be on the wet coast, uh, Chris and I are going to make our way down to LA and then we're heading on down to Central America. Actually, I'm going to drop Chris off there. If I can uh, officially drop Chris off into TBG's uh, waiting, loving arms, 
then uh, the whole thing is a, a, a knock the cover off the ball success. <laughs> so wish us luck. But uh, if you happen to be on the wet coast and uh, you'd like to uh, meet up, we're going to be doing meetups. And uh, obviously I'm uh, meeting up with somebody tonight in Seattle. It's probably a little short notice, but keep in mind, I'm doing the round trip. So if I don't hit you on the way down, uh, I will be driving myself back up from LA and I'll hit everybody on the same spots if I missed you the first time. Um, so, you know, things like uh, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Sacramento. Um, I even had somebody in Santa Barbara reach out and say, hey, why don't you uh, come and uh, we'll have lunch or something one day. So if you happen to be on the West Coast and you want to, you know, meet up and have a drink or a lunch or a dinner or something like that, or maybe even as generous as enough to let me crash on your couch. I remember Brian's a cheap ass. I hate spending money. But if I can save money on a hotel room by you uh, letting me crash on your couch, I'll, p- I'll spend that money on a nice fancy uh, dinner for you. So there's a deal for you. Eh? <laughs> All right. So uh, get ready, folks. The trip is about to begin. Dun, dun, dun. Um, as I had said there a moment ago, I'm not overly impressed with what I'm seeing out of the market right now. And you can kind of see this is kind of like a... Uh, uh, if anything, maybe if we're really lucky, we might have seen a bit of a capitulation there. Eh, capitulation is probably not the right word. But like a euphoric push, because if we look at the U.S. dollar index... Uh, I've been talking to you guys a while about this thing moving up here. We technically have hit a upside objective. Not only did we have a AB equals CD objective hit, but we also had a megaphone top hit, which technically is a trade location. Uh, and hats off to some of the site people, especially new people. Uh, sort of, uh, I want to learn how to trade megaphones and all that kind of stuff. Well, take a screenshot of this. And hopefully what you can see here is it's pretty straightforward, right? If you ever see the market smiling at you, it's getting ready to take your money away from you. So in this particular case, if you do have a top that comes in on the U.S. dollar, uh, that you know might be construed as, well, maybe the Fed's not going to raise rates uh, as aggressively as maybe they were previously uh, jabberwalking about. And then also keep in mind, too, that the third tag of the megaphone is actually trade location. So, uh, you know, Dan, I know you're very interested in this. Write down exactly what I just said there. Take a screenshot of this. Put it in your journal. You know, I mean, there's no reason why you can't paper trade that. Well, that Beamish guy says he's got trade location. uh, And uh, I know how much he gets all excited when he sees M's and W's. And that looks like a pretty well-qualified M. And, you know, the price objective would be a tag of the bottom of the megaphone and it would flush out my runner here at scratch. It would also come down and fill in these price gaps, which technically would be appropriate. Uh, And probably if we did a fib off of this entire range, that's probably like 50% levels, reload zones, that kind of stuff. And, you know, maybe come down and swim against all these key lows. The point here is that if this trade idea does fire, then that might be like a risk on kind of thing. Well, maybe the Fed's not going to be as aggressive as uh, they were sort of previously mentioning in that uh, in that uh, conference following the uh, Fed announcement. And you might see risk actually catch a, a bit of a bid. Doesn't really look like Europe. And I think Europe's in a bit of trouble. If I understand correctly, Charlie actually has uh, been diagnosed with cancer. So that should be an interesting twist for us going forward. I suppose you could argue they're trying to put in a bottom here on the euro. I actually think, um, you know, China has been on the out so bad lately. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of dead cap bounce revival kind of movement uh, out of Asia and Asian currencies. And notice that Japanese yen has a pretty nice looking base. And there was quite a long period of time where you'd have Japanese yen do really well. You'd have the bonds do really well, and hopefully you guys can see these Ws. We were talking a little bit about this recently, how um, these markets were starting to threaten to break down in earnest. And if they had broken down, oh boy, all hell was going to break loose here. So the fact that on the lower timeframes, they're trying to put in a bottom right off of this trend line support line here. If this can hold, it can turn the market back up. 
And you might find that people are like, oh, you know what? We don't have to worry too much about interest rates right now. I mean, I, I went on at length recently in videos about uh, other social media people talking about how this market was heavily, heavily manipulated through the fall there to sort of serve the banksters' uh, purposes. Uh, not really good economics, just crony capitalism, I suppose, once again. And how ironic. We in the West, our capitalist system is basically just turning into communist Soviet Russia kind of um, totalitarian market manipulation. Very little difference, which is so sad. You know, one percent basically just, you know, dictate uh, the, the lives of millions of people. Anyway, so if we go back to that uh, 30 minute chart I was showing you there earlier, right at this very important level. Do we break? Do we break? Do we break? In comes uh, a pretty well-defined double bottom. Actually, it might be interesting in the um, in the uh, secret options formula club meeting tonight whether uh, David would interpret this as a is that an Eve and an Eve or maybe an Eve and a Steve uh, bottom. An interesting uh, bottom that's uh, developing there, but you can see the W that's trying to come in here. So each and every one of you should all look at that chart and go, phew, oh goodness, I was getting worried there. The interesting thing about this, though, is you can kind of see, remember I had said earlier, the breadth of the market doesn't really look that good. And, you know, like, I find it fascinating that sort of darlings of the market in olden days, uh, Alan and his craziness, uh, I'll just use this chart to, uh, to show you. Um, and there's actually talk about kicking Alan out of sort of like the the uh, the uh, cool kids club, you know, like uh, these are the top seven stocks, right? You know, they've got like the, the funny little acronyms and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of talk about kicking Alan out of the cool kids club. And I got to say, that's a nasty looking chart. I mean, you know, Brian and M's and what do you suppose? I suppose we could say now Although I don't want to go on too long here. We got to get off to Seward. But uh, uh, how many Allens can smile at you at once? <laughs> I mean, look at all these damn smiles here. And does this turn into some huge honking smile? I mean, is that Allen like winking at you? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, you shake it. Oh, my goodness. This is a nasty, nasty looking chart. And the irony of this is that actually we pointed it out and I did it, of course, in social media and. We have the screener on the site. I love them. I don't know whether the team really loves them or not, but I absolutely love them. You know, the whole top here last summer was defined by this outside downside key reversal. And really, the market's never looked back since then. So fascinating uh, technical development there. So anyway, interesting to see, you know, like it, considering our sort of, you know, weird economy that we were in there through the whole sickness uh, economy and all that. You know, are we getting to the point where a lot of these fluffy nonsense names? I mean, for the longest time, we used to joke that Tesla's doesn't really manufacture cars. They manufacture tax uh, rebates. <laughs> and now, if I understand correctly, um, California is killing all those tax uh, breaks and stuff. So, you know, you might find that Tesla's a, a story of the past, not the future. And of course, Kathy Woods is uber bullish. So that in itself should be a reason. Maybe you better get the fuck out of there. <laughs> arr, 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 terrible. All right. So, um, you know, there's your broader stock market. This Tesla chart is probably not a bad example of what I sort of think about the broader market. Also, too, and I can't reiterate this enough. Uh, and it's free research, you lucky bastards. I mean, this is what's absolutely incredible. This blog is free. You're not going to find better research out there. And, it, you know, I mean, it sounds crazy that you would toot your horn and say your research is as good or better than Goldman Sachs or Merrill Lynch or anything. But I'll tell you, Josh here, he could easily go get a job at Goldman and stuff with the work that he's doing here. He could very easily go. I mean, this is just it's such it reads like poetry. I mean, he's absolutely spot on. Uh, excellent, excellent work by TRIers. And really, the green line here is what we should expect for 2024. Holy crap. So you can kind of see the beginning of the year, big up. And of course, we had an incredible January barometer, all that kind of talk. Then you can see we actually probably have to give a lot of this back here through sort of the first quarter. Then we go sideways. And then, you know, once we sort of get an idea of who's going to likely win this election, who the nominees are, 
And really, more importantly, we get a, a sense that nothing's really going to change with the capitalist system. My ear still bugging me. Thanks for reminding me, Grega. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I think God has a plan for me here. I, I do find it fascinating how uh, that's all played out here. Um, uh, God definitely has some sort of plan here for me. I'm not quite sure what it is, but anyway. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, sideways, sideways, sideways. And then sort of as we get out the other half of the uh, 2024 heading into the election, all oh, hell is supposed to fucking break loose to the upside. And this would make perfect sense, especially with things like Bitcoin. You know, we talk about the market usually likes to top about a month or so ahead of the happening event. We know that the happening event's coming in right around here. So, you know, we'll probably see Bitcoin do something along these lines, sideways, 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 sort of the hangover following the ha happening event. Then we're sort of like, you know, get into the summer silly season. Tons of these DeFi projects and new names are popping up right, left and center. Um, Sjord here, I think, has probably got like about a, uh, I don't know, at least a half a dozen names that he really likes. And if anything, he should be reloading on all of them because he made a bunch of money on the way up. But I suppose we'll hear about that in the after party. And get ready. I mean, are you ready to change your life? This only happens about once every four or five years, people. And it's so sad. There's only 28 people who get to hear this message. I do see that on a regular basis, we got about, you know, two, 300 viewers of these videos. But do you hear anybody barking about how this is it, folks? This is your opportunity? <laughs> and somebody write this down. Make a note of this. This Beamish guy. And let's, you know, let, I don't know, use this as some sort of like advertising or something going forward. Because I am telling you, folks, this is your opportunity. 30 damn years in this business. I can smell it coming. Um, so I don't know. Are you ready to take advantage of this? It's sitting here. The good part about it, hey, I, I went and got, I bought another cryptocurrency yesterday. Uh, thanks, of course, to my buddy. Uh, we'll uh, talk about it in the after party. In fact, I was teasing the public. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I like to do this sort of like a, just a little tease. I'll throw up a chart like anybody who sees this chart should look at this and go, geez, that that just looks like Brian. That's got him written all over it. But I blacked out the name and stuff. So made it a little bit of a, a mystery for you. But I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you live for. I mean, you can see what this thing did when it W before. Come on. I mean, is there any reason why this can't do it again? <laughs> I mean, it's just sitting there. So, I mean, then there are a lot of names that look like this. In fact, there's a lot of names that did go running up there um, uh, over the past, say, three or four months that have actually started to trickle their way right back down into reload zones and uh, looking pretty uppy. Uh, so, you know, if anything, uh, you know, avoid charts that look like this. That That's got trouble written all over it. Uh, but if you can uh, find those uh, those uh, names that look like that one, I don't want to give you the symbol. you got to figure it out on your own. Uh, we'll finish off this free broadcast with uh, just a quick uh, review of the corn. And if anything, we often see that this happens. Hey, Nore! You know, uh, Nore, everybody on the site wants me to, uh, to uh, uh, build me out to have your uh, bodybuilder build. <laughs> I couldn't believe how many Nore references there were on the site yesterday. It was hilarious because uh, I was a little bit verklempt and uh, people were like, dude, you got to exercise some more. <laughs> we got to get you looking like Nore. <laughs> anyway, uh, finish off this free broadcast. I'm talking too much here. Um, Wicks and tails like to be eaten. We know that, you know, the happening events coming up here, um, April, this says April 22nd. I'm not exactly sure exactly what date it is, but it's somewhere around there. You find it interesting. Uh, we have celestial events coming up here, which you don't have every day. This is very rare. And you can see uh, we had a big uh, uh, eclipse event last uh, fall coming out of that October. And that basically was the ground or laid the groundwork for this recent rally. Uh, my opinion, whatever the hell an opinion's worth, it's not really worth much. In fact, some guy even uh, said, well, I think uh, Bitcoin's going to do this, 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 and this. And I was like, okay, well, thanks for the opinion. <laughs> you know, I, if you know Brian, you know what Brian thinks of people's opinions and the, the value of people's opinions. 
Um, I, you know, if that person is watching the video, it's nothing personal. It's uh, certainly not a slight on you as an individual. It's just, I don't really think people's opinions are really worth a hell of a lot. Setups, they're priceless. So show me a setup with three unrelated reasons to justify taking a trade that you know that has been vetted out over time uh, and that produce uh, desirable results two out of three times. If you can get up into that number, I'll kiss your butt and call it uh, peanut butter if you want. Uh, that's what I want. I want setups and I want setups that work. So anyway, point of the matter here, uh, finishing off this conversation, I really wouldn't be surprised. And, you know, this is kind of like so full circle thinking about um, the um, uh, that tweet that I put out yesterday and me going on vacation here. I really wouldn't be surprised if we're just stuck in this trading range until we get through this event. I think about a month ahead of the happening event, but it might be three weeks. It might be two weeks. We'll probably see some sort of peak. They might even take a run back up top here and hit this big 50,000 number, which psychologically would make a lot of sense. And then, like I said, uh, usually what happens following the happening event is uh, we get a pullback either at least two 50% levels or if things get really ugly, we have to come all the way right back down into reload zones. I don't know what's going to happen here. But what I would say is maybe be just very careful about getting too bullish and too excited and, you know, throwing new money at Bitcoin up top here. Uh, it's That's a tough pill to swallow. I certainly wouldn't be doing it. Um, the cool part about this kind of market state, though, is this does open the window for like the little pieces of poo to have some fun. Because as long as Bitcoin's sitting up top here, the sentiment isn't negative. I think on balance, people are generally pretty happy. Um, so we can start looking at, um, oh, I don't want to show you that on the screen. Darn. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, you know, and there you go. I just spilled the beans. I gave you all a free treat there. You know, looking at names like this. And, uh, you know, there. I, you know what? I'm going to save this for the after party. I gave you a nice little treat there. So everybody knows which... Uh, which name I was looking at, but you know, could this thing pop up here nicely over the next little while? Sure. Can you bang out a few doubles here while you're waiting for Bitcoin to roll over? Absolutely. Uh, and if anything, uh, this is a great lead in to uh, to uh, our conversation here with Sjord, um, because uh, you know we're going to make a concerted effort to really sort of uh, have like um, a community of uh, wallet stakers. Did I get that term right? I'm sure they'll correct me when we get into the after party. Uh, but, you know, uh, getting all of the airdrops as you possibly can. You know, last cycle, we had a guy on the site named uh, Farmer Dave. And you just right now, this is the part of the cycle where you're farming, 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 farming. Get as many of the airdrops as possible, as many of the airdrops as possible. Then once we get into like 2025, which would be like in comparison 2021 then dave turned his name from farmer dave to astronaut dave because everything went crazy we all get rich i mean the irony of it all is if you don't learn from history you're doomed to repeat it i don't see any of these people on the internet and again you know what 30 viewers i don't know why i can't get the message out i must be doing something wrong here but to me, this is history just repeating itself. It's the same crap just four years later. So, you know, get out there and stake your fortunes. You know, I've, I've said this repeatedly. You better make a pile of money here. And I mean, it better be a big pile uh, because uh, I have a sad, sneaky suspicion there's another massive wave of hyperinflation coming ahead of us. So, you know, the big pile that you make today, go and buy some hard assets uh, before the next hyperinflation wave kicks in, because you might find house prices double, triple again. And, you know, your, your pocketbook just looks like crap if you just sit there and don't do anything. So the gauntlet has been cast, folks. Uh, are you ready for this? Can you put yourself in a position to participate? Oh, look at this guy's perking up here. So, oh, Jesus, look at that chart. I don't know. Does anybody see any Ws or anything on these damn charts? 
So what's interesting is like this is the kind of environment where the poop coins could actually probably have a lot of fun. And, you know, FYI, there are a bunch of names I was going to show you, but yeah, we're kind of running out of time here um, uh, in this Solana space that are looking pretty good. Um, and, you know, it, now is the time to get off your butt and get going on this. And it would really suck to talk to all of you guys a couple of years from now and see yet another big cycle. I mean, this son of a gun's probably going to be at new highs by the end of these cycles. I mean, you can see they're starting to go. So, so uh, wish us luck on the road this evening, this afternoon. Um, if you need to learn how to actually build this small business of trading and run it effectively, get your butt into the school program or at the very least get on the site so uh, you are in the loop um, and uh, take advantage of all the resources. <laughs> Adam, you bought potato again, eh? That potato, man, potatoes, he's going to he's gonna pay for our damn Super Bowl party. <laughs> and I'm fully expecting to be face down in a ditch out front of your house there, Adam, on Super Bowl day. So I hope you're prepared. <laughs> and I'm a portly guy, so when I'm face down in a ditch, I fill the ditch. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, have yourselves a great day. PMA for the win. Slow and steady wins a race. Let's go hang out with Sjord for a bit. Uh, and then I've got to go teach a class. And then literally I hop in the car and I'm off. So all the best. Hugs and kisses, as Marat would say. Remember what your number one job is. Don't take no wooden knuckles. All the best and bye for now.